G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be looking at the F-86K. This particular plane exists in three tech trees in War Thunder at the moment, the German, the French and the Italian tech tree, but today we're going to have a look at the one in the French tree. The matchmaking for these planes are pretty much identical at the moment considering that America and Japan are normally the matches uh, that are going up against this particular plane. And of course, uh, that means that France, Germany and Italy tend to be on the same side. However, this doesn't really change the types of enemies that you'll be facing since there are highly similar enemies on both sides of the spectrum here and of course they all sit at battle rating 9.3. Being at 9.3 this plane is actually in a real sweet spot at the moment. It is in that sort of area that is just really really nice to play. It doesn't get too many up tiers but it is able to deal with those quite nicely and of course it does get its fair share of down tiers and it performs quite well in those down tiers. This thing sees all the way down to 8.3 of course being a 9.3 and I think that's kind of fair because this thing is basically a 9.0 Sabre which has a little bit more thrust, better guns and two air-to-air -air missiles. I would very much uh, consider this plane an equivalent to something like the CL-13B. Now in my opinion the CL-13B should be a 9.3 three plane but uh, the snail decides otherwise and therefore my point is invalid so f86k what are our strengths here well this is kind of like a saber if you think about it as a saber with an afterburner and a little bit heavier then you're kind of on the money here you do have to realize though that the guns are a little bit a little bit funky to deal with you don't have that much ammunition to spray due to the high rate of fire and uh, you tend to run out of them kind of quick if you're not careful with the way you shoot. This plane also performs best at sea level but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be climbing at least a little bit. However, in the cases that I am going to sort of demonstrate here, uh, climbing isn't really going to be the way that I get a lot of my kills and that's simply because this plane does not climb as well as some of the other climbers in this type of matchmaker. For me, I would rather be the support fighter and sort of zoom around the map getting kills uh, that are sort of a priority for other people because they're on their tail or uh, alternatively looking for maybe not lower hanging fruit but uh, the attackers or the Yak-38s that have decided to come down to the ground. In this particular matchmaker you'll probably see a lot of AV-8As and a lot of Yak-38s and despite me despising both of those planes uh, because of their good ish performance in a straight line but terrible performance everywhere else. Uh, maybe I should make a video on the AV-8A. I have tried to get some footage for the Yak-38 but um, I don't know. I don't I don't like the Yak-38. It's a bit of a strange plane. You're basically guaranteed two kills and then good luck trying to get the rest because the GSH-23s for some reason I just can't aim them. Uh, it might just be a get good thing but uh, we'll sort of see to that a little bit later. Now I have picked out a couple of interesting targets here. I have an F5, a MiG-19 and a Yak-38. Now the Yak-38 is by far the most significant target here until he expends his R60s and then he's basically a sitting duck but the F5 has presented himself as the easiest target here and that's what I'm going to go for. Send an AIM-9B straight down the line and because the F5 is not paying attention I get myself a very easy kill. Turning around I see a G91 and uh, that means that he, because he's dead he's no longer a threat and of course the MiG-19 here is turning in towards me so I'm going to gently climb and turn away so that he'll have to expend a lot of energy to go for me making enemies that are around him as in my friendlies a bit of a uh, more juicy target. Now there's an F5 here and an F5 as well or second one but uh, this first one is going to cop a little bit of a beating with the 20 mils. The 20 mils have been fairly good to me and uh, as you can see two crits, one of them being a fire and uh, a pretty damn solid kill if I do say so myself. These two F5s weren't quite paying attention um, and now if you just turn your attention to this, I I'm pretty sure it's a bug but it still pisses me off. I'm going to wait for the sort of the little yellow bit or the reddish bit to go uh, away and then re sort of reset it and then go for the missile kill. Uh, the only reason why I went for the missile kill in this case is because I wanted to finish him off. I still considered him a threat and I thought he's probably bled enough speed or had enough damage dealt to him to the point where he can probably just sort of cop a missile and not have the ability to dodge it as well as eliminating him as a threat by the enemy team. So this SU-7 here, I take a bit of a spray at him and uh, he's managing to actually pull away from me and that's because the SU-7 has very good uh, ability to do that sort of thing but once it sort of runs out of steam if you will 
it's not really going to cope in a turn fight. It's just lost all of its speed and therefore lost all of its ability to dogfight. That is an absolute death sentence for the SU-7. You would have to play it fast against an F-86K. Now, the F-86K, in my experience, is one of those planes that you can basically dogfight almost anything. You won't be able to dogfight things that are super maneuverable. And of course, if something is able to cut into your turn very quickly, like a MiG-21, you aren't going to survive the first shot if he gets it off. But if you're able to somehow get him to miss and continue a dogfight on until it sort of drags a little bit, then you have a much greater chance at winning a dogfight like that. The F-86K is one of those planes that is still a Sabre. It's not a particularly heavy plane relative to the supersonics. And of course, it is technically still subsonic. It is not one of those planes that breaches the sound barrier and you know what you can use that to your advantage by having a nice turning circle of course when the guns work they do work beautifully and that is my fourth kill i've had an absolute pleasure playing this plane in the recent couple months simply because it is just so damn nice once you get a hand of those guns and of course once you grind some upgrades this plane is very very nice but you do have to realize that this plane is not a sort of it's not guaranteed to win every single dogfight there are planes that you will face that will out dogfight you, but for the most part, if you're facing a supersonic, you're probably going to have a good time just because they're designed for higher speeds and the speeds that you're going to be sort of turn fighting at are going to be a little bit lower. So you're not really going to be engaging your enemies at the speeds that they are preferable towards. You're going to be dogfighting at the speeds that you are because you're the slower plane. However, if you do find yourself in a situation like that, I would consider using energy as in converting that speed into a little bit of altitude to slow down the dogfight and then only then you could potentially come out with a victory. Now of course you do have to be careful, you can't just throw your plane away and expect results. You have to still be quite uh, I guess conservative, you still have to be quite uh, mindful of your plane and you still have to make sure that you take care of it because otherwise it won't take care of you. It's kind of like a sort of symbiotic relationship where you can't just throw your plane away because it will treat you pretty poorly. Now, in this situation here, we have uh, Americans. We have the F-11. Now, the F-11 is a supersonic plane, and it will not turn fight with you, especially at those low speeds. But the F-11 looks like he is a little bit distracted, and so I'm going to go for the guns, and uh, yeah. Sometimes they don't do God's work, but you know what? You just have to take the good with the bad. Now, speaking of the bad, this is an evening map or a dusk or dawn map, and for these particular types of maps, I really, really do not like them. Now, I was going to go for this guy, but then I realized he has half a wing. Do not, for God's sake, go after enemies that are damaged and heading straight to the ground. It is quite literally my biggest pet peeve. Uh, that and uh, saying, oh, Spit, I love your videos, and then coming to sort of focus the shit out of me, following me to the ends of the map. I, I don't like that. But uh, even more so, that MiG-15 was absolutely not my kill. And as a result, I did not pursue it. And I think that that is the correct thing to do. Now, where were we? Evening maps, dusk dawn maps. These particular maps are my least favorite due to the spotting system. And however you would like to think of the spotting system, personally, I think that this is probably the worst you get with War Thunder, where you get planes basically popping in and out, out of nowhere, and it gives you very little time to even think about where you're going to sort of shoot or where you're going to maneuver. Consider if you were in a plane that doesn't really like uh, being put on the spot, like a Hawker Hunter, for example, or even an early MiG-21 uh, in some cases. You really just, it just sucks. Now, have a look at this MiG. I bet you any money that he had no idea I was right behind him less than a kilometer. Now, if you are like that, it doesn't matter how much you keep your head on a swivel, they're just not going to pop up. And I've had that happen a lot in the past. Same as this A4. He looks like he just didn't know that I was here until the very last second. And for me, that is extremely poor gameplay. You, War Thunder is a game where you go through and you sort of devise a strategy, go in and execute that strategy and modify it accordingly. Now, have a look at this spotting. It's This F-86 has come up at 1.4 and the MiG came up at 1.1. This, this is my least favorite thing about War Thunder. I absolutely adore this game, but this one thing just really grinds my gears. It is just the one thing that I wish would change. And this happens a lot on these sort of Dusk Dawn maps. And I thought I might show this particular match, not because it has a high number of kills, but because it illustrates the spotting system that I uh, kind of don't really like. And this is this is sort of something that I would recommend to Gaijin to change. 
obviously it's probably never going to happen but uh, maybe as a community we can all sort of come together and have a look at this in a way that might uh, maybe it'll enlighten me maybe I'm just completely wrong uh, and then I can learn something new out of that and that would be a preferable outcome as well but we can see here demonstrated by the F86K that because of this plane just happens to suit this type of uh, dogfighting or this particular style of uh, flying then I'm able to actually capitalize on that and make the most of this kind of situation. But what about a plane like the Yak-38? What about a plane like the Hunter? These planes require you to travel in straight lines and to not get bounced, to, so that you're basically always on the offensive. What about the Sea Vixen? This is a plane that you basically can't be on the defensive in. And these types of maps are just so bad for this plane, because if you happen to get spotted, then you're pretty much screwed because you're likely going to be the only thing spotted. Now, a couple of other things I would like to bring up with the spotting system while we're at it. This map in particular is a bit of a culprit for this one. A lot of the ground targets on this map are showing up. Now, I would really love for these particular ground targets to only show up if you, if you sort of have a setting for it. I would much rather these ground targets only appear when they're patently obvious to you. So, for example, the ones that are there on the periphery of the little radar thing, I would like to not see. This would sort of streamline the amount of information that you get when it comes to dogfighting, and it allows you to pick out which planes are the biggest threat. It allows you to pick out which targets you need to engage. Rather than showing you where all the ground targets are, I would, I would like them to have a reduced spotting for ground targets if possible. So, what would that basically entail I don't really know in terms of you know developing and coding uh, returning to the gameplay here I can see a brother in trouble now an F-86A uh, dogfighting a G-91 is a bit of a dumb move but unfortunately my teammate has got himself into this pickle and now I need to come and help him so I'm just gonna book it throw the afterburner on try and get myself there as much as possible and when I'm going for this missile I'm going to try and make sure that the F-86 is not in that little bore site there so the missile tracks the G-91 beautifully and because he's so slow that is kill number four baited beautifully for me that was probably one of the most beautiful missile kills I have ever gotten in my life booking it from 20 kilometers out to help a brother out nothing quite beats it in War Thunder your teamwork can really just make the dream work that is four kills and that is not a bad effort if I do say so myself, even though I was helped out by a bit of a janky spotting system. So, moving on a little bit, we are going to find ourselves using the radar. Now, I haven't talked about this radar because it is basically bloody useless. It's only really useful for searching. I don't even think it has a track function. But in this case, I have been able to find a MiG-17 who has basically... I don't know where he's been. He's probably been you know, watching porn on his phone while he should be playing War Thunder, but uh, regardless of the situation, I butcher the shot, but because I have the missiles and because he's not really paying attention, one AIM-9B should do the trick quite nicely. So that's a nice little ace to round off the game, and I apologize if I sounded salty, I'm just being really passionate about the, the spotting system. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm just passionate about, and uh, when I'm passionate, I'm a little bit loud, uh, or a little bit aggressive if you will. But the F-86K overall is fantastic. If you are looking at giving it a go, absolutely. This is now the time where you're getting those really favorable matches to sort of get your hands on it, give it a try, unlock the 9Bs. I think if they require unlocking anymore, not really sure, but it doesn't even need it. You just need a little bit of discipline with your, with your guns and you can actually have a really good time with this thing. Unlock some upgrades and uh, you'll be fine. This plane is beautiful. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. If you guys want to follow me on any social medias, they'll all be on the links in the description below. But um, yeah, I've decided to make some other stuff like a TikTok and a YouTube Shorts. So follow me there. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Take care and I'll catch you next time.